Like I promised in my last video about understanding development length of rebar. So if you have not watched that video, try to watch that video which will help you get a good understanding about development length. So I'm going to give you the formula we will use to calculate development length of rebar. And this is going to be different depending on the code you are using. If you are using Indian code, the formulas and the calculations will be different. If you are using American code, known as ACI code, the formula and the calculation will also be different. But I'm going to show you the American code because this is the most commonly used code for calculating the development length. When using ACI code, this will be the development length formula. This formula looks like there is a lot going on. But it is actually not, and it is very easy to understand. So, let's understand the meaning of each term. So, I'm going to explain the meaning of each term. F sub y. F sub y is the tensile strength of the steel or rebar, depending on how you want to call it. F C prime. F C prime, this is the compressive strength of the concrete, which is in PSI or KSI, and this is pounds per square inch or K per square inch. Lambda. Lambda is our lightweight aggregate factor. V sub B. V sub B is the diameter of the bar we are looking at. So if, for example, we are looking at the number 4 rebar, the diameter of a number 4 rebar will be 4 over 8. And this is because anything up to a number 8, the diameter will be that number divided by 8. But if it is more than number 8, you will need to take the diameter of that rebar number. So this is pretty straightforward. We also have the theory side factor. So let's take each one of them one at a time. Size of T. Size of T, this is our reinforcement location factor. Now, the reason it is called size of T is because it sort of stands for top bars. Now, there is a very significant reason we need to account for top bars. The simple reason is just because of gravity. Now, let me explain this. How many of you have ever cast a concrete cylinder? If you have ever cast a concrete cylinder, how do you fill up the concrete cylinder? You fill it levels by levels. Now, you first pour some concrete inside the cylinder, then you tamper it with a tamping rod. You put more concrete inside the cylinder, you continue to tamper it using the tamper rod. You fill some more until the cylinder is filled up with concrete. Now we do this because we are trying to prevent air inside the concrete. That is why we fill it up levels by levels. If we are dealing with bars on the top, we multiply the development length by a reinforcement location factor of 1.3. And this means if you are dealing with bars on the top, you will need 30% more development length than you have on the bottom. And the top bar is defined where this dimension, as you can see on the screen, is greater than or equal to 12 inches. So, for top bar lesser than 12 inches, size of T is equal to 1.0. Size of E. Size of E, this is called the bar coating factor. And the reason it is called size of E is because it stands for epoxy coating factor. If you have ever seen a green looking river, which will look like this, the reason we do this is to prevent the river against corrosion and the icing salt. Now the question, why do we care about epoxy coated river? What does it have to do with the development length? Now I'm going to explain. The reason we care about the epoxy coated river is because epoxy coated river is slippery. And because it is slippery, they don't bond as well as uncoated river. So because of this reason, it will result in longer development length. So if we don't have epoxy coated rivers, 
then size of E is simply equal to 1. But if we have a positive coated ribald with a cover less than theory multiplied by the diameter of the bar or clear spacing less than 6 multiplied by the diameter of the bar, then size of E is simply equal to 1.5. So this means you need to increase the development length 50 percent. And for other impulsive coated rebars, size of E is going to be equal to 1.2 and this means you need to increase the development length 20 percent. Size of S. Size of S, this is the reinforcement size factor. Now, tests have shown that small bars require relatively less development length. So therefore, for a number 6 bar and smaller, size of S is equal to 0.8. And for all other cases, size of S is equal to 1.0. C sub B. C sub B, this is the smallest distance from the center of the tension reinforcement to the surface of the concrete or half the distance of the adjacent bar as you can see on the screen. Now finally, K sub T arrow. K sub T arrow, this is a transverse reinforcement index. So this is sort of a measure of how well the stirrups are doing. To be conservative, K sub T arrow can be taken as zero, or you can use this formula as you can see on the screen, where A sub T arrow is the area of transverse reinforcement, S is the center to center spacing of transverse reinforcement, which is basically the stirrup spacing, and finally N, which is the largest number of tension bars in a single layer. So this is R to calculate the development length. So you can use this formula to calculate the development length. So if you know this formula, you can just simply calculate your development length. It is pretty straightforward. And before I leave, there is a quick check you need to make after calculating the development length. When your values for size of G multiply size of E is lesser than or equal to 1.7, then your development length is okay. But if it is greater than 1.7, the development length is not okay, meaning you need to provide more development length so that the bond between the concrete and the river is going to increase. You can also reduce your development length for flexural reinforcement if you provide more steel than what is actually needed. And you can do this by using this formula which is the development length L sub D multiplied by the area of steel required then divided by the area of steel provided. So I hope you now understand how to calculate the development length of river. Now don't just leave like that without subscribing to my YouTube channel. I make videos on civil engineering. So if you do the channel here, if you can just kindly hit the red subscribe button. And also, you can share my videos with friends. I am doing my best I can to pass the little knowledge that I have about civil engineering to many people as possible. So if you want to support me, then please subscribe to my channel and also share my videos. If you enjoyed this video, you can click the like button. So this is the end of this video. Thank you everyone for staying to the end. God bless you all. Bye-bye.